Okay. Uh, hi, everyone. So um, first, I'd like to thank my co-authors. They're listed here. So this is a new project we started recently uh, where we're, we're interested in uh, um, studying the impact of uh, viscous plastic rheology parameters on simulated Arctic sea ice. So right now, there is a, an intense debate in the sea ice modeling community on how we should represent sea ice mechanics. So this is part of the uh, studies about this. So I'm starting with this, uh, these observations. This is from the radar sat geophysical processor system. So this uh, is showing the formation of the sea, uh, the sea ice cover in the Arctic. So you see on the, um, on the left is the shear deformation, and on the right is divergence. So, um, so, so what we're seeing is that you have these long lines of concentrated deformation. So these are called linear kinematic features. And so often you have strong shear that is co-located with uh, divergence or convergence, okay? So this is extremely important. Uh, these processes are very important. If Imagine it's winter and you have a lead that forms, so it's gonna expose the warm ocean to the cold atmosphere, so it's gonna be the, the, a site for the formation of new sea ice. So this is extremely important for models to represent these processes. So that's what we're studying today. So, um, so simulated deformations were investigated recently as part of the sea ice rheology experiment. There are two papers that recently came out. Uh, so Cyrex was a model enter comparison project. There were, there were uh, 11 models that participated. For the first time, three rheologies were compared, VP and its variant EVP, so viscous plastic. Uh, elastic and zootropic plastic, and Maxwell Elasto Brittle. So the, the two main objectives of Cyrex were to study if uh, current metrics that we use are useful for evaluating these rheologies and to compare them, and also to uh, determine how simulated deformations can be improved, and, to, and so to provide guidance for modelers on how to improve simulations. Uh, so. However, it's, it's a bit difficult for, uh, with Cyrex to draw strong conclusions because uh, these are very different uh, models, different forcing, different resolution, different configuration. So it's a bit difficult sometimes to say, oh, this different comes from this. And, but nevertheless, there are a few conclusions that came out from Cyrex. Uh, so despite what was claimed in some papers, it seems that all three rheologies can reproduce the formation statistics and scaling laws. So we, it needs, maybe we need some different metrics also to compare them, but still this is one result of, uh, of Cyrex. Um, also, yield curves with a higher ratio of shear to compressive strength tend to better simulate deformation. Um, whoops, sorry. Um, so, oh, that's the laser, okay. And, so numerical convergence, especially for the elastic viscous plastic and the elastic and isotropic plastic, so numerical convergence is crucial. So the models that did not have very well converged solutions did not perform very well in, uh, in Cyrex. And all rheologies failed to reproduce the PDF of the intersecting angles between the fault lines. So you, if you have these long lines crossing like this, so the angles is kind of, it's too wide in the model. So it's, it's hard to understand why. Uh, Damien is gonna explain that after, so I'm not gonna talk about this, but stay tuned, Damien will uh, come back to this. Okay, so the objectives of this work, so it's inspired by Cyrex, and also the work of uh, Amélie Bouchard and uh, Bruno Tremblay, 2017. Um, so here we wanna study deformations, as done in Cyrex, but we want to use well-constrained and well-converged EVP solutions. So we're focusing on one rheology, but we want to have well-constrained, well-converged simulations. And we also want to look at other fields that are impacted by sea ice rheology. If, let's say we're improving deformations. Are we also improving land fast ice, which is impacted by rheology? And are we also improving the sea ice thickness or the geophysical distribution of sea ice thickness? Um, we're gonna, as opposed to what was done in Cyrex, uh, we're, we're gonna concentrate on yield curves that are, la that are larger than the standard one. And we're doing this because there are other studies that have shown that it's beneficial to have 
a larger yield curve, for example, for land fast ice. Today I'm presenting a preliminary results, so this is work in progress. Okay, quickly, so this is the viscous plastic elliptical yield curve, if you are not familiar with that. So basically the, 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 the ellipse here characterizes or describes the critical stresses that can be sustained by the ice. So when the internal stress inside the ice cover reach the yield curve, the ice fails in tension, shear, or compression, or it could be a mix sometimes. And um, so here for our experiments, we're going to vary P star, so it's the compressive strength. So if we just vary P star, the ellipse has the same shape, but it, it's bigger. So we're gonna test bigger P star than the standard value. And also, uh, if we wanna play with the shear strength, we're going to vary E, so the ellipse aspect ratio. So if E decreases, the ellipse tends toward a circle and it has larger shear strength. So here's our methodology. So we're going to use um, our size NEMO configuration, uh, a regional configuration. We have simulations at 1 12th of a degree. That's roughly four or five kilometer in the central Arctic and we also have simulations at one quarter of a degree. For each resolution, there are 12 pairs of P stars and E that are tested. First of all, we, for each pair, the drift is optimized against IABP uh, observations or IABP drifting buoys. So this is different than what was done in Cyrex and the work of Bouchard and Tremblay. So here for each pair, we optimize the drift by, by playing with the air ice and ocean ice roughness. Simulations are forced by our own uh, atmospheric data, our 33 kilometer reforecast. It just covers this period, so it's a bit of a limitation for our study. Uh, so we do a pseudo spin up at first, three, year, three years of spin up, and then we have six years for the analysis. Okay, so going back to the methodology uh, for the, the optimization of the drift, this is done at one quarter of a degree uh, because it's uh, it's faster to do it at one quarter of a degree. So we optimize the daily drift against uh, drifting buoys. And this is the, uh, over one year, this is the, the bias with the, um, the, the IABP buoys. Uh, so you can see there's kind of a seasonal cycle in our bias. Uh, it's unclear why we have that. Is it our atmospheric data? It's not clear, but uh, still you can see that the mean is close to zero. And you have our 12 experiments here, okay? So we find roughness parameters here at one quarter of a degree, and then we apply these at one twelve of a degree. Okay, so now, so let's start with the formation. So what we're seeing in our results is that it seems that P star has a small impact on all our, uh, for the formations, also for land fast ice and for the volume. So and the ellipse aspect ratio has a much larger impact. If we're looking here at the av absolute divergence, this is a monthly mean for February 2005, you can see as, as we're increasing shear strength or as we're decreasing E, you can see that you have a lot more activity in the sea ice cover. So th there are a lot more uh, sea ice deformation. So this is consistent with results of uh, Bouchard and Tremblay, by the way. So we, we see that also in the PDFs of, um, of the deformation. So you have shear convergence and divergence here. Um, so you can see that the tails of the PDF are really affected um, by changing this ellipse aspect ratio. For example, the, so in red is the standard value of E equal two. And the, the, uh, there's, there's a big change in the tail of the distribution if we go to 1.25. And you can see we have so all the black curves are for the same P, uh, are for different P stars, and you can see that the impact is small uh, compared to the impact of E. So I don't have the observation, we're still working on this, but um, so this could be a way to optimize rheology parameters is to compare against PDF, or compare also against spatial scaling. So if you're not familiar with that, so spatial scaling characterizes how localized are these deformations. So, so you can see that, so basically the steeper the slope, 
the more localized are the uh, deformations. So we can see that there is a big impact also of the uh, ellipse aspect ratio. And again, the three black curves for different P stars are together. The three red curves for different P star are together. So really the impact is with the ellipse aspect ratio. And we can see that this impact is larger at one twelve of a degree than at one quarter. So th this is an animation of the sea ice thickness. And th this is kind of interesting. So. Uh, on the left is E equal to, so the standard value, and here it's larger shear strength. And you can see that it, these are kind of two different material behaviors. It's very interesting to see, like, uh, there's a lot more activity here, a, a lot more cracks. Uh, even though we don't model explicitly flows, we could say we, we're seeing lar uh, more different flows here as you can see, like exiting from straight. Look also, uh, so the model is able to simulate land fast ice. We have a grounding scheme, and because of the modified rheology, so it's doing quite well in the Laptev, East Siberian. Look also in the Kara Sea. So this brings me to the next slide. So, so this, we, we would need to uh, more work to see if we're in, what should be the optimal rheology parameters, but it seems that um, we could probably optimize against our GPS uh, observation. And if we look at land fast ice, so we're seeing that, uh, so this is consistent with previous studies we have done, but we had not looked at the effect of P-star before and with optimized drift. But still, if we decrease E, the ellipse aspect ratio, we get more land fast ice. This isn't the Kara C, so land fast ice area as a function of time in black is data from the National Ice Center. So we get an improvement here in the Kara Sea, and we have looked at uh, many uh, different regions, and we always get an improvement in simulating land fast ice if we decrease the ellipse aspect ratio, except in the East Siberian Sea, but East Siberian Sea is a place where grounding is important, so it's possible that our grounding scheme would need re-optimization, or we would need a, a more sophisticated one. One minute, perfect. Oh, that's good. Okay, I'm kind of slow. Okay, uh, uh, quickly. Um, so there's a huge impact though on the sea ice volume. And uh, so our simulations are short, so we would need more time to investigate that. But there's a huge impact. This is consistent with what Miller et al. have seen in their low resolution simulation. The impact of E is huge. So this would require more uh, study and see if we improve also our geo physical distribution of thickness. So quickly, uh, our conclusions are here. Parameter E has a large impact on deformation volume and land fast ice. A lower E promotes ice arching, so more land fast ice. It leads to more deformation and more ice production, we, we think, and that's, why that's what explains that we have more volume. Uh, there are more deformations in the tail of the PDF, and it has a strong impact also on the spatial scaling. So that's it. Thank you very much. So perhaps we have time for one quick question. Uh, Bruno, you pick. <laughs> uh, so, uh, well, Lorenz hasn't asked one yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, can you comment on the impact of the atmospheric resolution? So in your experience, having higher resolution atmosphere, does it change the metrics or? If our, the resolution of the atmosphere? Yeah. Oh, it does not change. If it does impact the metrics and the way the ice breaks, or if it's only dependent on the ice. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. I don't so know the that. atmospheric resolution. Yeah. In this case, it's 30 kilometers, so yes. it's very different from the model. Yes. Does it have an impact? So increasing the atmospheric resolution, does it lead to different? Uh, yes, we have seen that. We have not done a very detailed study, but we have seen that uh, because we're, like, there were some results about CAPS. Mm -hmm. the, I don't know if you have seen yeah. that. So CAPS is a, a system we have fully coupled with a three kilometer resolution atmosphere and we get more deformation with the uh, higher resolution atmospheric model. Okay. It's not clear what's the, what is the impact of the coupling though, but uh, yes. Thanks. So we, yeah, it's a good point. <laughs>